Hello, in this video I'm going to go over problem number four from IMO 2005, International Math Olympiad. Determine all positive integers relatively prime to all terms of the sequence a n equals 2 to the power of n plus 3 to the power of n plus 6 to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so let's uh, get started. So we are looking for integers that are relatively prime. So if an integer is relatively prime to all of these, it means all of its prime factors are also relatively prime to all of these numbers. So in other words, I, I would have to first look at prime numbers and see which, which prime numbers are relatively prime to every one of these. So let's just start from maybe p equals 2, p equals 3, and then see if we can find a pattern or how we can deal with this. So if I plug in p equals 2, looking at this 2 to the power of n, 3 to the power of n, plus 6 to the power of n, plus 1, these two terms are even. And of course, these two terms are odd, which means this is, in fact, always even. So 2 is never relatively prime to a n. So 2 is not one of those primes. If we look at 3, we can look at 2 to the power of n, plus 3 to the power of n, plus 6 to the power of n, minus 1. When we take that mod 3, we get 2 to the power of n minus 1, which if we take that mod 3, as soon as n is 2, we get 4 minus 1 for n equals 2, which is just 0, mod 3. So 3 is also not one of those prime numbers. So now for a prime p, I was hoping that I can evaluate some terms of this sequence. So the f very first thing that I thought was, what if I replace the exponent by uh, p? So I would get this number. And when I take that mod p by Fermat's little theorem, I would get 2 plus 3 plus 6 minus 1, which is, in fact, 10. So at least for p equals 5, this is uh, divisible by 5. And just to remind you, Fermat's little theorem tells us that if uh, p is prime and a is an integer, then a to the power of p is congruent to a mod p. Okay. So that didn't quite work. It eliminated the possibility of p equals 5, but nothing really else. So then I thought, OK, maybe I can plug in p minus 1, because I know how to evaluate a to the p minus 1. One of the consequences of Fermat's little theorem is a to the power of p minus 1 is, in fact, 1 mod p if p doesn't divide a. So let's try that. Uh, if I take that, that's 2 to the power of p minus 1 plus 3 to the power of p minus 1 plus 6 to the power of p minus 1 minus 1. When we take that mod p, we get 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1, which is 2, which is of course not 0. So that wasn't very helpful. And this is assuming that p is relatively prime to 2, 3, and 6, which means it's more than 3. So one other thing that I can evaluate is a, a sub p minus 2. Because if I look at this one, this is p to the power of p minus 2 to the power of p minus 2 plus 3 to the power of p minus 2 plus 6 to the power of p minus 2. Now, what are these numbers mod p? So 2 to the power of p minus 1 is just 1. So this is, in fact, inverse of 2. In other words, this is basically 1 half. As long as p is greater than 3 with the same condition. The next term, and there's a negative 1 here, the next term is 1 third and then 1 6 and then minus 1. And of course that's exactly 0. So what does that mean? It means p divides a, a sub p minus 2 if p is greater than 3. And we know that for, for p equals 2 and p equals 3, we also have terms that are divisible by 2 and 3. Therefore, there is no prime that is relatively prime to all terms of this sequence. So the answer is n equals 1. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I will see you in the next video.